Hey there, welcome to the Bronx Buzz. This is Bronx Nets program where we talk to reporters and educators and journalists and editors and all the different kinds of people who are putting stuff out in the Bronx. Uh, this evening in our second segment, we're going to talk about one of the um, most interesting and entertaining uh, TV shows on BronxNet, and they've got a big event coming up in the South Bronx. We're going to talk about that show, some music also. And in our first segment, we're going to go to a longtime friend who got a promotion, and we are so proud of David Brand who is now the deputy editor of City Limits. Nice to have you with us, David. Thanks for having me on the show, Gary. And congrats thanks for those on, kind words. Well, congrats on, on the uh, promotion. Um, so you have been the housing uh, reporter, still uh, with your writing, aside from any other supervision you do, uh, you're working largely on housing and homelessness. Yeah. Yep, exactly All right. right. So you wrote an article, um, said that in the uh, Bronx Senate race, that's the 34th Senatorial District, Democrats uh, unite in opposition to affordable housing. I thought that was a very strong title and frankly, somewhat accurate. Um, you based it on the, um, uh, at least the initial concept on the debate that we did with the uh, three candidates of the 34th Senatorial District. So why don't you give me your point of view, why you chose that title and what it is, and then we'll break it down. That's right. Story brought to you by BronxNet. I, uh, <laughs> That's right. You know, you mentioned I cover housing uh, and homelessness or city limits, and I found that race to be pretty undercovered and wanted to take a look at it through the housing lens because mm -hmm. there are a couple pretty high profile projects that are getting a lot of opposition from the community. Uh, one is a about 350 unit development uh, along Brooklyn Boulevard and overlooking Brooklyn Expressway, uh, the site of a current superfood town grocery store. And then the other is a proposed supportive housing site for formerly incarcerated individuals with pretty serious medical needs on the grounds of Jacoby Hospital. And those both projects are both in that Senate district and also facing pretty significant opposition from, he, from heated, the local. You could use the word heated. heated, yeah. heated uh, opposition. A stronger word than significant. Heated, heated words. Heated. Virulent. Yeah. Yes. Ferocious. So, I mean, somebody said this is war. Somebody said, you know, this should never happen in any community. Yes. Um, let's do one at a time. So the Bruckner proposal, now the borough president was on our show a couple of weeks ago and uh, talked about moderating it, making it a smaller, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, residence, you know, so it's not whatever it was, eight stories, and then they would lower it down. So it's not as large and it's more in context with the rest of the neighborhood. And um, she also talked about, you know, doing proper studies to make sure that there are enough schools and enough sewage and all the other issues that uh, come in there. Um, but there is this feeling of, we don't want to have, bring other people into our neighborhood, right? I mean, I, I wish I could characterize it another way, but that is definitely what's out there. Yeah, and I think that's definitely the perspective from, from outsiders who are looking at this and saying, here's a middle-class community that has low density, housing like one two three family homes yes, new york city's right. in the midst of an affordable housing and just overall housing crisis here's an opportunity to add a few hundred units uh on the edge of that low-rise neighborhood and yet it's still facing such as as we said ferocious backlash i can't help but think it's related to um you know larger issues going on in america but we don't really usually talk a lot about those but um uh, and, and here's the question, and I asked those candidates, you know that I asked those candidates, and then when I did the um, race for the 33rd um, Senatorial District, I asked the same question, and that is, does every community have the responsibility during this very terrible housing and homeless situation, uh, have a responsibility to provide housing? Uh, and um, and if you do believe that, meaning speaking to the candidates, then where in your district should would you do it? Uh, I would say in both races with the five candidates I talked to, nobody proposed and he said, hey, I know of a site. And so it really leaves people looking to develop affordable housing wanting. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, so maybe the front runner candidate in that 34th district is current assembly member Natalia Fernandez, who is running to replace Alessandra Biaggi, the current senator who's right. vacating the redrawn district as she's running for Congress. So 
you know, she's got the institutional support. She's got a lot of the money. She's got the name recognition that's seen as a front runner. I followed up with her and also another candidate, Christian Amato, who's positioned himself as more of the progressive. He worked for Biagi. He has worked on a lot of progressive political campaigns. Mm. Followed up about like, where would they suggest affordable housing? And, uh, you know, both acknowledge that there's a housing crisis, that we need more housing. They don't support these two current plans. Fernandez specifically said she would support upzoning around the new Metro North stations that are coming to Morris Park right. and to Parkchester. And, uh, you know what? I, I should amend what I said, because that is true. She did mention that. I don't, I don't want to say that nobody gave a suggestion. She did mention that. That's right. Yeah. It's, but the thing with that is those stations aren't going to be up and running until like 2027. So right. we're, we're thinking like five years down the road. Yeah, and so, so that, that's just for, you know, when the rezoning there would probably start. You look at some of these projects it's still like you, you can rezone an area now and it's not going to be for several years until people can actually move into new buildings that are built on that site. So here, here's the thing that I, I want to bring up and mention to you is at the same time that there are people uh, uh, protesting against these, uh, the building of these affordable housing projects, there are people complaining about homelessness in their communities. So one of the issues that has come up and why, for example, Bruckner Boulevard would be suggested, whereas maybe it hadn't been suggested before, is that um, they want people to be housed, homeless people to be housed in their communities. A lot of people say, hey, it's not our community, it's somebody else's. Well, of course, then you saturate, let's say, the South Bronx or the West Bronx and other places where many people do come from. But now homelessness has spread. And if you say we and, and you just fight like crazy that we don't want them here, and we're not building these kinds of facilities. You're just going to have more, I, I mean, you're going to have more homelessness, right? I mean, yeah. you need homes. Yeah. I mean, if people can't afford housing, they're going to become homeless and they're going to either be in shelters on the streets or, you know, unstably housed, crashing at friends, families, other people's homes and never like having that and stable the, that's right. The trickle down of that, of course, is, you know, a breakdown of so many things, whether it be, um, you know, the economy or their kids ability to get an education. David, you have the perspective of other neighborhoods because we really just cover the BX. Mm -hmm. um, is this a common uh, dialogue going on in other parts of the city? It is. I think if you look at, for example, the site we, we talked about at on the grounds of Jacoby Hospital, there's a vacant building there. Right. The city wants to turn it into supportive housing for formerly incarcerated people, people leaving Rikers, for example, with, they call it complex medical needs. So that could be like stage four cancer or renal failure. So it's people who you know, are carrying around a colostomy bag or need kidney dialysis every single day. They have a criminal record. They've been in jail or prison. It makes it harder to find housing. Here's supportive housing contained on the grounds of Jacoby. Uh, <laughs> relatively small amount of people or low amount, like a limited amount of people. It's like 70 units total, 50 for uh, the, the people who are formerly incarcerated. We also see, so there's a fight against that project, it kind of mirrors another fight over in uh, Hell's Kitchen, where mm. another supportive housing site, it's time for people with HIV AIDS, was getting a lot of pushback from that community and that community would say, no, we, 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 we want, we want housing for people with HIV AIDS, people who were homeless, but we were promised middle-class housing and that's what this community needs. So there's always kind of justification for this opposition. You say, no, you know, we want to help people in need. We just don't want this specific project to help them, but I, this is the project that's on the table. So, yeah, well, that's, that's number one. And also the organization that is, you know, going to be responsible that is pitching at the fortune society has a great reputation mm -hmm of doing it. Plus it's on the grounds of Jacoby. It's not like they're building it across the street where somebody lives. Uh, and, and again, if you, if we don't find some way of caring for these people, they are going to be homeless and they're going to be ill and they're going to be a load on society in some other form. And, and uh, you know, if, and, and a lot of these, these are not people who've been convicted of murder or, you know, gunplay or whatever else. These are people who've had like one year, um, the sentences have, are out on bail, et cetera, et cetera. So it's not like that. You know, Dave, um, when you get a chance, look up 5731 Broadway, which is across uh, Staples. That was a family shelter that was protested heavily. But there was a community group that came out 
and welcomed the people there. And I, I don't know who the provider is, but they're running it very well. And since that was built, I don't know, three, four, five years ago, you haven't heard a word, a negative word about it. It's just people living there. Now, I'm not saying it never happens, but it's possible to do it right. Yeah, and that's a good point. You know, there's all this opposition in the lead up and then something goes through and then more often than not, it seems becomes more seamless part of the community and then you don't hear uh, some negative consequences about it. And that's actually a pretty good idea for some follow-up reporting. Here's five places that faced fierce community resistance. What's the situation now? Probably uh, fit into the community pretty well. Yeah, fit in is, and, and people are just living their lives because they have the support, um, which could be any different um, types of uh, support. Um, do you, so I, I guess my conclusion is, and you can weigh in or not, is it would be great for somebody um, in a position of responsibility, whether it be somebody in office or somebody running for office or whatever, to say, you know what? we got to solve this problem. In other words, I'm not hearing answers to solving the affordable housing crisis. And that's why I was in love with your headline uh, <laughs> that said, um, Democrats unite in opposition to affordable housing. It's actually true. Um, because they didn't really suggest, other than, as you said, um, Assemblymember um, Fernandez didn't really suggest where else or how else they would um, uh, deal with this um, uh, this issue. Uh, another aspect of this is um, the developers or the, the people who want to build these things. The one on um, Upper Broadway up here, uh, 262nd and Broadway, uh, there's a lot, I mean, there's a lawsuit now because they say the operator or the potential operator is, is not fit. Um, do you get the sense that there are a number of responsible um, because you see this, this will be the last question because we're almost out of time. Um, and there are a number of responsible providers who can run and build good housing and, and run the kind of support that will keep people off the streets. I think there are. And it also, you know, this, those providers that are good have to be incentivized to take on these projects because they only have so much bandwidth. And if they don't take it on, it's going to be a bad one. Dave, let me just uh, follow that up with this. It would then suggest that not only does the provider need to have some resource and some know-how, but there has to be some supportive fund, to use a pun word, supportive funding to go with it, that it's going to have to be some governmental thing, whether it be a grant or in a budgetary line or, you know, something like that to get the thing going. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, that's exactly it. right. All right. Well, you know, that means that we need communities to step up. And right now, um, uh, certainly according to the debate I did in, in your article, um, we're not quite close to uh, getting that. Uh, David Brand, congrats again on being named uh, deputy editor at City. Thank you. You have a lot of work to do. We appreciate you taking the time with us. And we're going to take a break. And then when we come back from the break, we'll change gears. It'll be music in the Bronx. Don't go away.
Okay, back with you on the Bronx Buzz. Uh, I am thrilled for this segment. These are some old friends and uh, people who are doing what is just so important and so under-realized how important it is in the borough of the Bronx. Uh, it is um, Fernando Michael from uh, the Fox and King. Uh, Fernando, nice to see you again. Good to see you. How are you doing, Gary? And he brought with him Brian Durier, who's a musician, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Hi, Brian. How are you? I'm doing well, Gary. How you doing? We're doing great. When I talk Bronx music, that makes me happy. So, Fernando, something very exciting is coming up. It is the block. We understand what that means in the Bronx, the block. Uh, it is a music and arts festival to premiere at the Bronx Brewery on Saturday, Saturday the 27th, uh, from 1 to 10 p.m. Sounds like a festival. Um, Fernando, get to it. What, what do we got? What's, what's happening? Yeah, absolutely. So this is a collaboration between the Fox and King, the Uptown Melody, um, Ayana Williams running, and uh, Dury as well, which we have here. It's a music and arts festival. Uh, we're building a, a platform for our community. We're showcasing local talent, local artistry, and we're doing it at a bigger platform than uh, we believe the Bronx has seen before. Um, and I think Brian really kicked us off with this event. Um, definitely, he could tell you more about how it started. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, Fernando is actually moderating the program for us. He's throwing <laughs> it to Brian. Let's let's do it, man. What do you what do you mean? How, how did we how well, did we get to the block? Well, well listen, we, um, Fernando and I we used to go to shows in the basement of the church with an organization called the Bronx Underground. And we are very much like products of our environment. And I feel that you know, in we the are. Bronx. I said, aren't, aren't we all, man? Go ahead. Yeah, and, and, I, and I feel like that, you know, in, in programming in the Bronx, when it comes to music, it, it doesn't span the full spectrum of what we have to offer in our borough. So, you know, I had the crazy idea of one night when I was just like, listen, we have we have hip hop, we have punk, we have R&B soul. Um, why don't Latin we get all jazz, that? Latin jazz, Latin jazz, jazz there, we, for sure. We, we, have, we, we have reggae, like, we have all of that. And it's it was just here. like, you know what? I know, I know two incredible people that do incredible shows in the Bronx, and I made two phone calls. I called Ayana and I called Fernando, and I was just like, "Listen, I really think that we should put together a festival by us for us, wow. in our borough." It, it's re it's it's really exciting. Um, so it's going to be at the Bronx Brewery. Um, then um, uh, Brian, talk just a little bit about the selection of the location. And let's get on the inside. What what does it take to put something like this together? It's not the believe me, I've been around a little bit. You can't just do that <laughs> and have the band yeah. show up and have the sound right and have the people in the yeah. house uh, behaving themselves. You know, you got a lot to work on. Well, listen, like the Bronx Brewery is has been like a central hub in the South Bronx for yes, events. Like they have a lot of programming there, um, revolving around you know our peers. And, and they do collaborations with some of our peers as well. Um, and, you know, it's a central location that everybody can get to that they're familiar with. Uh, I have a really good relationship with Jason of Empanology, and I was just like, man, it, it's, it's a very good energy. And they were super welcoming when we approached them with the idea. Right. Um, and they've also done work with Ayana and Fernando. So it just made sense. It made um, sense to have it there. Maybe I shouldn't have made the assumption mostly because we've had Fox and King on our programs before. Um, but Fernando, what, what, who is the Fox and King? And of course, there's a very strong relationship at BronxNet because you have a program on BronxNet. So uh, let's talk about that. Then after that, we're going to uh, take a look at uh, Brian uh, doing his thing, which is um, going to be something everybody will enjoy. But go ahead, tell me about Fox and King. Yeah, um, so as you know, we've been working for over 10 years, uh, collaborating with local organizations, local artists, uh, businesses across the Bronx and New York. Um, so what the block is, is kind of the culmination of putting together organizations, putting together um, our network and all combining our efforts to create a platform for music in the Bronx. Um, definitely working with Brian and Ayana are kind of at that point over 10 years of experience for us. It's just getting bigger, better and stronger networks. Uh, do, do you know, it, it, as you know, it's something I support wholeheartedly. I personally and certainly BronxNet Television supports wholeheartedly. Can I assume that anybody you called and said, we're putting this together, they were like, 
yeah, okay, I, I'm, I'm in. This is what, of course, we've got to do, right? Right, I, yeah. and Brian, I mean, the, the, and, and I, I'm so pleased because almost like a good journalist and a good reporter, um, you are tapping into something that nobody talks about, but is just so large in this borough and so much a part of the, for want of a better term, the soul of the borough that, uh, I mean, it just is. And I, I'm thrilled. I'm definitely going to try and get down there and, and um, have some fun. Um, so, Brian, um, just talk to me about your own music and um, what we're going to take a look at. Well, all right. So I, I'm a singer songwriter. I mean, the best way to describe my sound is like if Bill Withers had an alternative rock band, that's just kind of my vibe. You'd be in that um, band. Yeah, pretty much, you know. <laughs> um, and, you know, I, the, the, the song and the music video that you're about to see is called Feel. And it's basically about, you know, me not wanting to work a day job and pursue my dreams. And, um, you know, this this right here is a dream, putting together a festival in my borough at home with right. people that, that do great things here. So uh, Listen, uh, you're speaking my language. And um, so uh, rather than say, um, lean on me or, you know, lovely day, I'm going to say here's Brian Durier. Let's take a look. Let's get to business. All right, there he is, Brian, doing um, what you do. Um, so, um, who who do you think will attend? Um, we'll start with Brian. Who do you think will attend? Who do you think should attend? Um, and how many bands go go through the the whole thing? You know, and actually, um, it's ironic because uh, you know this is the uh, whatever fifty third anniversary of Woodstock, so this is almost like a little mini Bronx Woodstock. It's not outside in the hills somewhere <laughs> in Soundview Park, but it is um, it is it is a way of understanding the same concept uh, yeah i would totally agree i would say the people who need to be there are people who don't know what what the music scene looks like in the bronx and the people who are going to be there are the people who do know what the music scene looks like in the bronx, <laughs> but don't but don't know the full spectrum of it so yeah. you know th that was the whole point of getting the three of us together is that we we all have fernando and i come from the same we also reside in different places and, and, and as far as like music and taste and you know artists that we surround ourselves with and um, we're, we're bringing all that together we have eight artists on the bill we have three djs that, again and, and with the and, and with the bronx and with the, the bronx brewery with the bronx brewery there there will be um, uh, enough uh, food and drink now is that going to be in the outside park or are you going to do it inside you know because i got that nice outside or is it going to be kind of on the inside because I've seen music and shows in there as well, or both maybe? I don't know. So, so we're actually, we have the performances outside and we also outside. have our vendors on the, on the, on the, we're going to have our vendors on the inside. Of the and the vendors on the inside. Summer in the yes. city, man, that's what we got to do. I, well, listen, I'll check the weather forecast, but it's been so warm and hot. Everybody be out there nice and relaxed. Um, let's, Fernando, let's just um, wrap up and talk a little bit about Fox and King. Um, talk to me a little bit about um, like what's next. Uh, it, you know, how big is this in the realm of all that you're doing, um, uh, or, or are you just you know every week uh, we do the same thing? You know, the the next thing. 
I, I think the block is going to be the start of something actually truly beautiful uh, mm -hmm. for the borough, uh, not only just our individual collectives, but the Bronx as a whole. Um, as Brian said, we really want to showcase what we're doing here, the music that we have here, the, the next generations that can be inspired by this collaboration of music and artistry. Um, and what the Fox and King is doing, more collaborations, more networking, and more, you know, working with other organizations to bring events like these to our borough and beyond. Uh, for people who don't know, and I've seen the show on BronxNet, and of course we've had you here on um, uh, the Bronx Buzz before, um, when is the show on? Um, how can people see it? Of course, you can just, I'm sure you could Google it and get on YouTube and find some, but if they want to see it on our TVs, uh, that's what we want to do. Uh, so with B-Sides, we're actually in post-production. Uh, what, what wait, 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 what is B-Sides? Uh, I, I'm, what show are you, are you referring to? I'm just talking about your, your show. Oh, it's called B-Sides. I always think of it as <laughs> Fox and King. Um, yeah, so right now, uh, season one and two are, are on YouTube, available for all okay. public watch. And uh, season three will hit your TV screens within the next couple of months or so. Just keep an eye out for that. Um, is it is it a difficult, the same thing for you, difficult to find musicians in the Bronx? Or do you um, uh, do you readily find people who say, you know what? I'm just, of course, I'm going to do this. Why wouldn't I do it? That's for you, uh, Fernando. Oh, um, I think there there are dozens, if not hundreds of artists, if not more, in the borough. Um, really just looking for a platform. You know, they're looking for a stage, a place to perform, a place to network, a place to grow. That's not necessarily in your Brooklyn or your Manhattan. Um, I'm sure Jerry can attest to this. You know, we really are trying to bring something collectively to the borough. Um, again, individually and as a mass collective. Mm. Uh, and so, Brian, um, let's go. Uh, the 27th from beginning at one o'clock, stay all day, have plenty to eat, bring your friends, bring your neighbors, bring your love, bring your bring music. Your dog, bring your dog. <laughs> bring your dog, okay. I don't have a dog. I, I have a tortoise running around here in my apartment. But that's, another, that's another story. Um, and do you see this, Brian, um, as more than one a year, or like, like really starting a thing? Or you figure we do like one festival or you wait and see what it's going to look like? I think, I think the idea was that we want to do this annually, but we, you know, the idea of the block two is also to showcase that like when all of us get together, this is what we can do. And we all have our own events outside of the block. It's, That's to, right. it's, to, it's to build the network and showcase Got the it. network. And, you know, Listen, um, we, we got to run. Fernando Michael from Fox and King, thanks so much for everything that you do. You know, you have a friend here. And um, Brian, you have a new friend here, and uh, I'm good. I'm definitely going to get down there Saturday afternoon. It's going to be a party, and I don't like to miss a Bronx party. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, so that's it, folks. Um, we will see you next week on uh, the Bronx Buzz. Thanks to David Brand from City Limits for talking about affordable housing, and uh, these guys, of course, for talking about Bronx music, which of course is eternal. And um, guess what? We'll see you next week. <laughs>